In this video, we're going to look at the basic layout of a statement of profit or loss for the year ended, or like some textbooks in some countries call it an income statement. Very first thing we've got to remember, what is the purpose of the income statement? We want to calculate the profits. In other words, the result of the business over a specific period. Now, in this example, it's after a year. You look at bigger companies and they do it quarterly every three months, right? As I said, this is for year ended. In other words, we want to calculate the profit. So we're going to look at income or revenue, less expenses, right? The business name should be on top. The statement's name, the date is up there. We start off with sales. And you can see I use three columns here and I put the sales amount in the first column. And the first thing I subtract is sales returns, which basically gives me my net sales in the second column. I then go less cost of goods sold, or some countries call it cost of sales. I subtract it, I draw a line and I put my answer in the third column. And now I go less inventories adjustment. And this sometimes when a physical stock taking took place, the business realized that some products might be obsolete or stolen and they adjust, in other words, subtract um, that inventories they've written off. And that gives me what we call gross profit, which means big, a big profit, all right? We now go and add up all our other operating revenue, and you can see that consists out of interest revenue, discount revenue, uh, rent revenue, etc. I'll put it in the first column, draw a line, and put the total into that third column. And now I say my gross profit plus or add other revenue gives me a net operating revenue or net operating income. When we look now at our expenses, we got to now subtract our expenses and we're going to break that up into three groups. And I've started off here saying less other operating expenses. And now I break it up into three groups so that the business can actually analyze what sections creates the biggest expense to them. So if we talk about selling and distribution expenses, it is those expenses that are directly contributing to the sales of the inventories or to the transport of the inventories. In other words, you advertise, advertise will increase sales. Hopefully that's why advertising is under selling and distribution. If you are delivering a product and currently with COVID-19, we all experience that online sales are now the thing that keeps some businesses open. Now, they offer free delivery up to a certain point. So delivery expense has got to do, it's connected to sales, so that's why I'll put it here. And then your sales, sales staff, the people on the floor, the people doing the sales, we would put their salaries under this. If we look at general administrative expenses, those are all your other expenses like insurance, telephone, rates, electricity, etc., etc., And the third category I like to put them in is finance expenses. In other words, how did we sell? What terms did we sell? And how did we start this business? Where did the capital come from? Did we borrow? So that is what I look at financing. And here you see bad and doubtful debts. So this business obviously sells on credit as well. And if debtors are written off, that will be part of finance. Also, if I allow discount for prompt payments, and then I said, if the business is being started by borrowing money, in other words, debt equity, the interest we pay will be part of the finance expenses. Now you can see I've listed them all in the first column. I draw a line and put the total in the second column. Now you could put the three there and put your total there. That's not an issue. I've added up all these. I've drawn a line and I've put the total next to my heading. It's the same with finance expenses. I draw a line and put the total there. Because I'm doing another calculation, I'm going to add up all my expenses together. I continue drawing this line and remember a line represents that a calculation is taking place. So I add up these three amounts and I put the total in the third column. Now you could also put it there in the third column because there's the heading. That part of the layout is not that important. I've added that up, 
put it there and I draw another line because now I'm saying net operating income less my operating expenses gives me a net operating profit. Now, in most cases, if you study accounting at school uh, up to grade 11, that's probably where you stop and you will call it a net profit. However, if you continue, you could look at other expenses, less extraordinary expenses, for example, a flood, a hurricane, a tsunami. If you lose things there because of expenses which you were not covered by insurance, then you will put that in there or also the loss of burglary. Right. So you can now subtract those losses to get to the net profit. And that is your basic layout of an income statement or statement of profit and loss.